Hey y'all, Billy from Permapastures Farm. If you need any bone sauce or comfrey, any of those things, go check us out at the website. I know everybody's wanting some these days. All right, we ain't gonna mess around. We're gonna get right into it. We're gonna talk about preparedness in a way that nobody has really talked about before. And we're gonna talk about it in the form of fertility. But before I get into it, look y'all, we've shown you, and we got playlists to show you as well. We've shown you the 18 day Berkeley method, works great. Showed you the 30 day chicken tractor on steroids method, works great. Now we're taking another dog to, to the hunt and we've never done this before. We've chronicled a little bit of it so far on Patreon and we're gonna do more over there as well. That is using another method of composting uh, derived from um, basically using the methods of Dr. Elaine Ingham. Now, Michelle is through her, she's most of the way through the, um, through her course, her online course, and I'm most of the way there as well. If for no other reason, learning what I've learned thus far has been paradigm changing. Some of the things I thought I knew, I know better. Some of the things I thought I knew, I didn't know properly. And I'm going to get better at all of it and hopefully get to a point, not hopefully, but I will ultimately get to the point where I'm able to convey it here. Now, to the preparedness element, you hear a number of people right now saying, hey, you need gold, you need silver, you need Bitcoin, you need cash, you need land, you need storable food. And we, we are champions to nearly all of that. But let me talk, you, talk to you about one preparedness element that maybe you haven't thought of or not even considering. That is compost. Because think about it, if you have jacked up land and it's messed up one up one side down the other. Let's say you have gardens that aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Well, compost is the healing element to all of that. In fact, even your animals, once you do the right things and you get this stuff squared away, you get your pastures squared away, guess what? All these elements that you've been using from the outside, you no longer need them. In fact, I dare say, and what I'm finding out is you don't need them now. You just got to take the right dog to the hunt. So let's talk about what we've done so far. Now I'm gonna have you, we're in the area of this barn we've kind of tore down. And by the way, you see some of the fundamental elements over here in which I'm using to make some of the compost that I got going in here. Let's go back here and we'll take a little field trip. We'll talk about these in a moment. Now, this is the first pile that I use using her methods. Let me just tell you right off, follow directions because I didn't. And this stuff, Kind of got a little bit jacked up. It, it's finished, but it still needs a little bit of work. I got a couple of inferior thermometers in there right now. And, um, you know, we'll get to this in a minute. Now, let's go back here and talk about what I've done lately. This here is a pile that is about done. I mean, it, today is the day where it can either stay in the cage and it comes to ambient temperature, or it's going to go over here in the bin that we're about to create for it. This is going to be what I'm calling my fertility bin. Over here is a pile that I just made day before yesterday. Now, you can see a distinct difference. You can see all the green in here, things that haven't com composted yet. You see the things over here, and it's considerably darker. It's that rich chocolate cocoa color that we want in our compost. Now, like I said, I screwed up that first batch. This other batch seems to be turning out all right. It's actually in the stage of cooling down right now based on this thermometer, which is telling me that it's about, uh, about 143 right now, but that's down considerably to where it was. Now, the advantages to using this method, whereas in a Berkeley pile, you're gonna flip that thing seven, eight times maybe, maybe more. This one, you only flip three times. And there's a whole methodology about how you go to do that. We'll cover that in a minute. All right, keep in mind, this here is finished. This here is on its way. Now, the difference is in terms of the time you have to wait. Now, Berkeley method, 18 days roughly. Um, you let it cool off and cure it. It's going to go a little bit longer. Um, this method really is not much longer. It's within 30 days. Now, why am I telling you this is a critical component for your preparedness? Is because this is essentially your resupply. Think about what we're going to do with this stuff. When it's all squared away, we're gonna not only use it in our beds, first of all, we're gonna look at it under a microscope and make sure, that, okay, that skill alone was worth the cost of the course, okay? We're gonna look at this stuff under the microscope and find out if it has, quote, the soil food web in it that it's supposed to. 
If it doesn't, we will amend it with the proper things to give it what it needs. This one here, it's going to wind up in the same place. But what I'm trying to point out right now, what is absolutely critical in these times. I mean, for crying out loud, we got a government that is seeking to create war, which also means famine. Um, we have a border that's about to be wide open. We got, I, from the top of my head, I don't even know how many volumes I could fill, but that's not important right now. What's important is what I'm able to do, what I'm, the fertility I'm able to derive from all this, whether it's in my garden beds, whether it's in the high tunnel, whether it's around my fruit trees, or better still, I can make a drench, get the soil squared away down there, which is still pretty jacked up from the previous owners, and in a single season, get that thing off and running. Make foliar sprays out of this stuff, which is going to ultimately be compost tea. You got a compost extract, which basically you put on the ground, and then the tea, which we're going to put on all the leaf material and stuff, depending on where it's being used. How cool is that? Folks, I'm about to go over here and I'm going to create this little area right here is going to be what I call my, it's going to be my little compost facility, okay? And what I'm about to make today is essentially what I'm going to call affectionately my compost bin. So we got this stuff that isn't so wonderful that I'm going to combine with the stuff that is probably wonderful. And this area, which now, which had straw in it just a few moments ago, is now going to be where I set this thing up. Now, what I'm going to do with very simple, easy to acquire materials, I'm basically going to screw this to here and rebar this end to the ground. And I'm going to combine that with this, and we're going to put them in here in this pile. We're going to let that cure. And in time, what's going to happen is I'm going to get the fungal. With where this stuff is going to go, I want about an equal distribution of fungal and bacteria. And all of that, I, now think about, here's the beauty about this thing, is that in the past, I was never 100% sure. I had a good indication that I thought it was fungal dominant in the areas, and judging by the proof down the hill, I was probably right on the money. But now I gotta know for sure, because I'm now acquiring microscope skills, which is gonna help put this stuff on another level. Now, why would I go through the expense of learning this? Well, number one, it's my craft. Why would I take the expense to learn all the other things? Number two, it's my craft. Why would I go across country to go work and study with other people? Because it's my craft. This is what I do. When I say permaculture is my passion, I mean it. And right here is the, the indication of it. We spend a lot of money on education. And the dog we're bringing to the hunt today is all about fertility. Because you think about it, going right back to Masanubo Fukuoka, the one book I recommend everybody read, One Straw Revolution, it all comes down to the soil. So in terms of your preparedness, and then for the times to come, can you think of anything that's more important? Think about your animals. Do they have disease issues? Do they have other issues? Are you having to worm them? Are you having to do all these different things? Well, guess what? You take the right dog to, to the hunt, a lot of those issues probably go away once you get your soil, not probably, they do go away. Once you find out what you got to do to get your soil on point. Well, for today, like I said, this whole thing right now, we're going to make a bin here. In the future, I'm going to make it where this pile is sitting, which is going to ultimately end up in there. We're going to have a bin here, maybe a little small one over there. I'm going to put bins all the way over here. So if you have areas, and the reason why I'm picking this, number one, it's out of the, rep, the weather. I can monitor the uh, moisture content, which I want about 50% at this point right now. And um, I can do all those things within this shed. So look, y'all, we talk about preparedness to come full circle with this thing. You've heard everybody talk about preparedness um, in terms of things you just store away. But I think we're missing the most fundamental component, and that's our soil, where we transform this right here into this right here. All right, with that said, we're gonna go ahead and get this bin built, then we'll come back to it. All right, one cool way about this method that I really, really like is when we pull this cage off, it kind of stays put, which isn't really the case 
for most composting methods. And part of it is your moisture content may not be right. You want 50%. Check this out. I'll get this off of here. All right, this one here may not have the same, it may not behave the same because I was so aggravated at this point. This was my first one and I was angry with myself because I didn't do it properly. But despite me, it seems like it turned out. So let me go ahead and get this one off. All right, at this point, you can look at this stuff and good night, man, it's looking pretty good. Um, Still needs to develop a little bit more. Not a big deal. You're still seeing components in there. Over here, this is the one I did right. There's a little bit of actinobacteria in there, which is something new I've learned about. And I'm gonna combine them both over there with the expectation that it's gonna, it's gonna pan out. I'll let you know how that goes along. But right here, this is one I know I did right. And look, it may take you we are old hands at making compost, okay? And some people, it seems, get a little bit frustrated when you do this because it's not gonna turn out your first time, your second time, maybe your 10th time. But who cares? I mean, get to the doggone finish line on this because this is where everything is built. If your soil ain't right, ain't nothing else right. Here's another little method I like about this. You can reach in there, grab a piece of it. The moisture's pretty good and, it, and the pile stays. I'm gonna shake it out over here, and I'm just gonna combine these two. All right, that's a wrap on this one, y'all. So. In really no time at all, like a week and a half, we went from literally everything you see in here to what we see over here. Now, keep in mind, I got a little bit of straw. I didn't intend to be in this pile here. But honestly, y'all, this is well on its way to being that dark cocoa. Um, there's a lot of aggregate, not aggregates, but there's a lot of uh, big pieces of wood that are still gonna break down. Now. My demarcation point for this is when it becomes ambient temperature, it's ready to rock and roll. And so far, this is looking phenomenal. And this is coming from somebody who's made a lot of different compost piles. Here's the big takeaway that I'm wanting everybody to consider, is you can literally take fertility that didn't cost you a dime. I mean, essentially the components of this, um, in these two piles here, it was basically 60% um, carbon, the rest of it nitrogen in varying degrees. These are all things that are easily sourced and didn't cost a dime. Didn't cost me anything more than a little bit of elbow grease to move it around. That's really it. Um, think about, now I know in these times, everybody's thinking, I've got to be prepared. I need all this other stuff. This, in a nutshell, is your resupply. You dig? That's what I'm getting at. This is the most important component out there in terms of your preparedness that nobody seems to be talking about but I'm asking you to give it some serious consideration. Give it a try, make it happen. We've given you videos before and then here before too long, we'll do some on this if we're not exactly stepping on the tones of Dr. Ingham. Because honestly, this a lot of what I'm doing here is really her, um, her work. So I don't just wanna go telling the whole world about all the nuts and bolts about it until she gives the approval to do so. And um, look y'all, make it. Make it happen. All right, y'all, consider the times you're in and be like the sons of Issachar where you see those times and you make preparations for them. All right, y'all, remember, if you need bone sauce, comfrey, anything we have, check out the website. Until next time, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. We'll see you next time.